Diabetes drug increases heart disease risk. Metformin, a drug that makes your body's tissues more sensitive to insulin, is one of the most common diabetes drugs on the market. However, new research shows that among people with hypothyroidism, the use of metformin was associated with an increased risk of low thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH levels. If your TSH levels become too low, it may lead to serious damage, including heart problems, such as atrial fibrillation, which in turn could lead to congestive heart failure. Separate research has also shown that treating type 2 diabetes with glucose lowering drugs actually showed the potential to increase your risk of death from heart related and all other causes. Researchers noted, the overall results of this meta-analysis do not show a benefit of intensive glucose lowering treatment on all cause mortality or cardiovascular death. A 19% increase in an all-cause mortality and a 43 increase in cardiovascular mortality cannot be excluded. These risks are typically unnecessary as type 2 diabetes is easy to reverse without drugs. If you want the short version, sim simply swapping processed foods for whole organic foods lower in sugar and sugar forming carbohydrates combined with a few minutes of regular high intensity exercises will quickly put you on the road to reversing diabetes. A warning about beta blockers and scientific misconduct. Beta blockers are drugs commonly used in the treatment of high blood pressure and congestive heart failure. They work primarily by blocking the neurotransmitters from binding to beta receptors, thereby dilating blood vessels which reduces your heart rate and blood pressure. Until recently, the European Society of Cardiology recommended using beta blockers in patients undergoing non-cardiac surgery. Earlier this year, however, researchers calculated that this guideline, which they found was based on questionable and probably fraudulent research, may have caused up to 800,000 deaths over five years in Europe alone. The beta blocker guidelines were based largely on research done by a scientist who was fired for scientific misconduct in 2011 and who was also the chairman of the committee that drafted the European treatment guideline. You would think that once this was known, immediate action would result. However, it took two years before the ESC withdrew the beta blocker recommendation once the scandal had unraveled. This is absolutely scandalous as nearly a half of a million people died unnecessarily due to the delay. In that two-year span, many European clinicians may have felt that their hands were tied as failing to follow guidelines can lead to being penalized, even if the doctor knows the guidelines are likely to do more harm than good. Last month, a revised version of the article was published which went into even more detail of the harms that occur when fraudulent research is published and put into clinical practice, even years after the fraud is uncovered. As Forbes reported, they write about a culture of neglect in which few if any participants have anything to gain by finding or reporting scientific misconduct. They cite numerous examples in which misconduct has been alleged but the responsible actors, authors, home institutions, journals, and medical societies have responded in only the most minimal and non-aggressive fashion. The portrait they paint is of a scientific and medical establishment devoted to not rocking the boat.